nice people here, very friendly. And good tucker too. Always enjoy climbing up out of this valley. It's even more spectacular when you're coming down into the valley. Rolling down 295 out of Portland, Maine. Uh, 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 uh. Still high from people down there. Feeling no pain. Uh. Here we go. Killops Bridge straight ahead. That's where I went last time. We're heading to Jindabyne. Beautiful. So we're heading up to the Barry Way. Not sure if we'll get to as far as Jindabyne, but yeah, g'day guys, Steve here from Dirt Bike ADV. Uh, New Year's Day. Contained myself last night, no beers, so um, got up reasonably early, just got a few things done and got a bit organised and uh, jumped on the bike in late morning and um, beelined it. We're heading up to the Kosciuszko High Plains, so up around the Jindabyne area. I've uh, bought myself a Christmas present, bought a nice little fly rod, so fly fishing something I've never done before. So I uh, bought the spin rod as well, if it's a total disaster and I can't do it, I'll, uh, I'll get the spin rod out, but um, yeah, got the rod tube on the sole of the bike, worked out a good spot to fit it, so um, yeah, we're going to head straight through to Jindabyne, we're not going to turn off down the limestone road, which goes across to um, an amber and Omeo and that's those sorts of places. Uh, yeah, and we've obviously missed the turn off to um, the Snowy River and McKillop Bridge. But we are going to join the Snowy River up over the border, so we um, put the chicken roads in poor condition. Um, we go um, past the limestone road and up through and over the border through Sug and Buggin and um, yeah, end up uh, following the Snowy for a fair while. And I think maybe that's probably where I'll camp tonight just along the snowy somewhere we'll see how we're going for time but um yeah hopefully be away for a couple of nights although they are predicting rain so we'll play it by ear a little bit I'm talking about 20 mil of rain and uh I tore me bloody uh, overpants last time I went out so I haven't got a set of overpants at the moment so I'm just wearing jeans but we'll see how we go it's all part of the adventure as I like to say and uh if it really does look like it's going to turn pear-shaped tomorrow or Wednesday, I might just beeline at home. Maybe even go home by Omeo just for something different. But, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. We'll do a bit of a tour around and we'll uh, try and catch a couple of trout, maybe one for tea even. So, yeah. That's the limestone road. Got a good thumbnail photo there. So yes, I've come across from Benamba and Omeo before a couple of times. I've gone across and done the Dedding Trail and gone into um, McKillop's Bridge, of course. And um, probably a bitch of this friggin' trout in there too. Um, but yeah, never turned left and gone up to um, uh, Genderbine this way, up the Barry Way, so... Oh. So today's the day. down there is the snowy river have a look at that bloody beautiful don't ride off the edge Stephen pretty nice view though there you go. Couple of four-wheel drivers. Oh yeah, a couple of campers. There you go. And 
the Sogenbogen River. Could actually camp here now, but have a look at it. She's uh, flowing. Wow, look at that. I expected that. Um, I knew it'd be going pretty hard because there's a lot of rivers and creeks run into it, but um, I'm hoping I'll get up the top on the Kosciuszko High Plains and some of the littler creeks will be just reasonably normal flow. So. There we go, there's the border. Pressurise a bit. Oh, Kosciuszko National Park, you can see the uh, rain they've had here. That's, that track's all washed out. <laughs> She's gone. Yeah, okay. Well, this is the time I want to be pulling up. We do follow the snowy for a while, and I know on certain maps, yeah, there's campgrounds and that up here, so we might just pull over for the night, we'll see. Um, depends how many people are around. We'll play it by ear, but probably just going to find a camp spot now. I'm not going to get a fish in tonight, not on the snowy river. I was hoping I might, but, but uh, not, to the, not to be. So New South Wales, here we come. I think we'll call this the night. This is the um, Running Waters Campground or something like that. Um, right on the snowy, that's just the snowy down there. As I said earlier, it's um, it's quite uh, quite running quite fast and quite stirred up, unfortunately. But I was sort of hoping, this is where I was aiming to camp, but I was sort of hoping I'd get up the other side of Genderbine maybe if I pushed it. But it's six o'clock now, I've still got to set the tent up and uh, cook a bit of tea. So I think we'll pull up here the night already got the gear out spreading it over the table it's amazing how you actually uh, can take over a picnic table by yourself but um, there's a bit of firewood here and everything if I want to fire it's quite warm it's about 30 degrees 31 degrees so yeah it's quite hot up here so um, yeah but I think we'll just call it quits here I'm having a Canadian club already so I'm pretty well committed to camping here the night um, and uh, yeah we'll set the tent up over there somewhere and uh, well, uh, well this will be our bivouac for the night. Anyway guys, I'll get all set up and we'll cook some tea. So what's for tea I hear you ask? Well, I'm not a big fan of those hike pats you get. They come in the big tin foil bags. Good idea, but everything's dehydrated. I don't mind my noodles being dehydrated, so I buy one of these. But when it comes to the protein, I buy either um, tin foil packets or tins of tuna. It's a great way of uh, having a bit of uh, meat, so to speak, a bit of protein, and uh, something you can carry very easily. Although it is in a can, um, you know, you can take the can out. It's fairly small to take back out with you. But yeah, that way you get sort of like some half sort of fresh proteins, sort of half fresh meat, even being tuna. I chuck a little bit of this uh, long life milk in with the noodles, and then just at the last minute chuck the tuna in, just warm the tuna up and that's how I cook a lot of the meals and this stuff I just pack into my um, my little um, dilly bag, my little um, pantry so to speak whenever I'm packing up my gear so from the last trip this has been sitting in there from my last trip so it, it can sit in the shed for a month or two, it does not matter and so you know um, that's the beauty of it I didn't buy any groceries today, I just jumped, chucked all my gear in and, and left and picked up some fuel and um, at, um, at uh, Buchan and, and kept coming. Uh, these long life milks, the tuna, the pass up, is all in the gear ready to go. So um, it keeps it very simple. Um, I might pick up some fresh fresh stuff, may, maybe some lamb chops, some red meat or something tomorrow or a steak or something like that. Um, but I have got some more of this in the pantry there, so to speak. 
But yeah, just just that fresh meat, that semi-fresh meat. It is tinned, I know, but at least it uh, hasn't been dried out and you're not rehydrating it. So I just think it's a, a, a bit of a healthier option. Anyway, I'll get into it, I think. So a bit of water. And chuck a bit of milk in as per the instructions bring that to a boil and uh, chuck the noodles in so yeah this is my cooking setup I usually take a frying pan and a stainless steel cup and so yeah boil the water for a cup of tea obviously there's no waste there you don't need a pot for your cup of tea you just use the cup you're actually going to drink it out of um, and the frying pan acts like a plate and uh, a bowl and a frying pan and a bit of a saucepan as well too so that's all I bring to cook with these two things here so yeah little gas stove and a big cylinder so yeah pretty simple like I say people if you come to see a cooking show you're on the wrong channel you might as well quit and just bail out now but this tastes quite nice oh beautiful but then again have you ever seen a cooking show where they eat the dish that they spent half an hour cooking and they go, ugh, this actually tastes like crap? No, you haven't, have you? But this one tastes nice. Very nice indeed. Did not leave me uh, Christmas present oak leaves behind, had I? Right, oh. Sleeping on a cot with no mattress was a disaster. <laughs> I got bucket or sleep last night. Once I put the mattress on top of the cot, all good. But there you go, lesson learned. If you bring in a cot, I think if you're a skinny little kid you'd be fine, but uh, as a grown adult with reasonably broadish shoulders or a, a, a larger person, no good at all. Uh, the bars on the side sort of inhibit you a little bit and um, yeah, <laughs> nonetheless. Righto, what's the time? 6.38, nice early start this morning. No uh, condensation in the tent, no dew, so very, very pleasant camping. Didn't have a fire last night, it was quite muggy, I've got to say. The guy told me, he pulled up here, he said it's actually 31 degrees, and I reckon there was a bloody tropical humidity about it as well, too. Anyway, keep heading north. We haven't got a rod out yet. Hmm, it's pretty spectacular, really. That's the Wallace Craig you look at. Man, that's spectacular. Look at the layers of the mountains up there. Bloody beautiful.
we've come up the snow river heads over that direction we've come up out of the snowy valley now bloody nice spot bloody hell but there's only one thing on my mind and that is a coffee and an egg and bacon sandwich so into the Jindabyne we go stay off the road skip Jindabyne. I haven't been here since 1988. Come through on an 86 model Tenere. Having a look at the snowy scheme. Where's the town? Left or right? I'm going to run with right. down to the top end of the snowy here and have a look there but um, unfortunately this is one of those national parks that are tightly controlled there's people on the gate you've got to pay to look sideways so um, I paid my entry fee but she says up here is full so it's one of those uh, national parks that are very very popular so not my cup of tea I tend to find try and find places that are a bit quieter and out of the way less people the better of course so yeah but anyway while we're here I'm gonna have a look and um, uh, I'll just drop into this little spot up here and um, sort of like um, just suss it out for future reference I'm pretty close now this is where I was sort of head last night I thought oh, I'll have a look at this spot but I never realized that all this is strictly controlled and and that um, it's sort of like um, very popular, so yeah, probably a bit naive on my behalf, but anyway, you don't know until you come to these places. This is the Snowy River again. So yeah. Nice little swimming hole there. Probably full of trout too. <coughs> but yes, this is the place I'd like to go. Without 350 people would be ideal. Ah, oh, back into Jindabyne. So we're going to go right out around Jindabyne, up around the top of Lake Eukenbeam now is the plan. And tomorrow I'll get up early and drop down into Corriong and head home through Benambra and Omeo so that's alright I thought there might have been some areas up in here itchy nose syndrome thought there might have been some areas up in here behind here but it's all very popular and full of people and uh, I've even seen a few fishermen around so I'll head a bit further north hopefully just find some quieter areas that aren't so popular and get up onto the further up onto the higher plains um, above the tree line hopefully and uh, yeah try and find somewhere up there north of Eukenbeam might even be on the Tumut River or something like that we'll see what we find sort of creeks I'm trying to find but not on private land what the 
traffic will stop and fall. Someone's earing up. And someone's shifting their shape from another paddock. Tempted to stop, very tempted, but it looks very busy. I think I better stop somehow. Because I'm not sure there's any fuel again for a while. actually correct there won't be any fuel for a while beautiful cool how you going boys Man, oh yeah I think we could say we're living the dream aren't we yeah. <laughs> ah there's the top of Lake Yukonboom What a spectacular ride, this one. She's been devastated by fire though, that's for sure. me for today. Been here for a couple of hours now. Just going for a bit of a swim and set up the camp. Had the rods out, no luck. A little bit of breeze around still. Just enough to sort of make it a bit difficult. I want to be casting that way and there's a little breeze coming down the down the river. It'll settle down a little bit hopefully a bit later on because it's overall it's very still but very nice spot. I'm taking this one. Very nice spot. Last night, last night, it absolutely bucketed rain last night. Uh, rain from seven. I went in the tent at seven o'clock, having me cup of tea, through to about nine thirty. Then again at eleven, and then again about one. And uh, you can see the river's running a bit dirty. I thought, oh, I might have to get out of bed and actually um, get out of here. Um, but I hasn't risen that much. It's probably only risen a uh, foot, so, so to speak, something like that. Maybe not even that. But a lovely campsite, but um, I'm getting out of here early, very early. Um, there is rain coming, and I've torn my wet weather pants about a week ago, so I haven't got a new set in yet. So I don't really want to get a wet ass. So a bit of a rush leave this morning. Uh, make sure we uh, tr at least try and beat most of the rain. people came in here last night, the people down there and these guys. So, uh, thought I had the place to myself nearly for a while and then a few people arrived.
bit of momentum required on those ones after a bit of rain. Yeah, lovely spot. Um, I'll come back to this spot. Absolutely beautiful. That's the um, Yukon Beam River. And to my right over there is the Yukon Beam. I like Yukon Beam, so yeah, lovely spot. That was one of my options last night. I thought, do I just pack up everything wet and just come and stay at the cabin? <laughs> I assume it's open. Obviously been restored, this one. Oh yeah, it is open. Day use at emergency shelter. It would have been emergency last night, I reckon. <laughs> going to get washed off the side of the mountain. The last rain we had last night was about 1.30 but obviously it hasn't rained since then. The roads are dry so yeah. Gotta go up here, heading west, turn south, cross the border. Hopefully beat the rain. But I've got such a long way to go to make it to the border of Mexico. So I ride, ride like the wind, ride like the wind. Da -na, da -na, da -na, da -na. And I got such a long way to go. Make it to the border of Mexico So I ride like the wind I ride like the wind Uh-oh, uh-oh Oh, another good bloody trout fishing river Look at that Holy hell, this is trout heaven here I'm Probably the same you can be river I'd say There you go Beautiful bit of country
north of Manambra. Elevation 700 metres. That's either 590 or 690 according to the watch. Probably 690 I would think. You know, that would make it right. Don't need fuel but um, I might give my bottom a break, maybe text the wife and just tell her I'm on my way. Not actually sure what's at Brunamber, if there is fuel anyway. Oh yeah, there is fuel, beautiful. General store. Yeah, I might just pull up and keep going, try and beat this rain. I'll just get that. dry road home have just evaporated. <laughs> yeah, bugger it. Bloody bugger it. So I'm going to wrap it up here guys. I've just pulled in home yeah, and got myself a pair of dairy farmers bib and brace pants. I'm, I'm liking these a lot to be honest. I think they're going to do me fine. Um, so I'm half waterproof. I tore my dry riders last time I went out for a ride actually and I haven't got around to replacing them yet. So these will do, but we are going to get wet. Um, I can't have the camera going while it's raining. Um, water gets in around the microphone connections and uh, she blows up very quickly. So yeah, good trip overall. A long way to go for a, uh, about four or five hours of fishing yesterday afternoon, but uh, nonetheless it's some of the country I wanted to see, so I've been there and done that now. And uh, certainly a very nice ride this morning coming up from the Yukonbeam River and over the cross of um, over the top there down into um, Corion. It's a, one of the most spectacular rides I've done for a while, so yeah, most enjoyable. And certainly going over the top from Corion to Omeo is far quicker and more straightforward than going from Genderbine over the top to, um, to come out of Buckham there, so I made the right choice. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and I'll uh, hope to see you out in the trail soon.